Hello, podcast family. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Design Break Podcast, where we dive deep into the world of design and freelancing to help you elevate your skills and grow your freelance business. I'm your host, Rocky Rourke, and today we are tackling a topic that resonates deeply with every freelancer, the continuous quest for new clients. Specifically, we're going to be exploring a unique referral technique that I recently tested, which landed me a $12,000 project in less than 24 hours. In this episode, we're going to explore what I've started calling the bounty method, a new technique for gaining referrals by offering a bounty of cold, hard cash. So grab your favorite note-taking tools and let's get ready to discover how you can potentially break the feast or famine cycle and keep your sales pipelines filled. Don't forget, if you enjoy this episode, please consider subscribing and leaving us a review wherever you get your podcasting fix. It helps more creatives, more freelancers like yourself find us and join our thriving listener base. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Let's get to the heart of this issue. For freelancers, finding consistent work is one of the biggest challenges. It's the classic feast or famine cycle. When you're busy, you're really busy. But when it's slow, it can be very worrisome. It can be dead quiet and you have no idea what to do next. Traditional methods of finding new clients like cold emailing, social media marketing, or even relying on platforms like Dribbble, Contra, and Upwork can be hit or miss. Let's be honest, Dribbble has not been what it's been like for the last decade. It's really been dying down. They often require significant time and money investments with unpredictable results. And let's not forget the emotional toll that it can take when your sales pipeline stays empty despite your best efforts. Plus, there's the issue of trust. In a market saturated with talent, clients want to work with someone they can rely on. You know, breaking through that initial barrier, improving your worth is often the hardest part of securing new projects. So what can be done about it? You know, how can freelancers build a more reliable pipeline that not only delivers consistent work, but does so in a way that aligns with their business goals and personal values? This is where the bounty method comes into play. You know, imagine a method that leverages your existing network, turning your professional contacts into a powerful lead generation engine. It's about making your network work for you and at the same time, repaying them for their efforts when fruitful. But more on that shortly. With the challenges of traditional client acquisition methods fresh in our minds, let's pivot to a real life example that illustrates the effectiveness of this alternative approach, the bounty method. This isn't just a theory, it's a practice that transformed my own freelance business completely overnight. It all started after a conversation with my business coach. Yes, I have a business coach even myself because you know what, sometimes you need additional bits of help and it always is beneficial to get someone else's outside opinion. We were discussing the inefficiencies of my existing referral system, which was based on offering a percentage of the project's total cost something most freelancers and agencies offer, you know, despite being a common practice, it was rarely motivating enough to generate actual leads. No leads were coming in from this system. Uh, in fact, most people, you know, I would offer, you know, oh yeah, here we have a referral bonus or referral fee of 5%, 10%, and no one ever uh, took a bite. No one ever really submitted results or submitted leads uh, for us to check out. So my coach suggested a shift. Instead of a percentage, why not offer a flat rate, a tangible, concrete number that people can get excited for? So I switched gears and created a quick little offer, you know, a $500 bounty for any referral that led to a closed project. It was simple, straightforward, and suddenly much more appealing to my network. I rolled out this new referral system by reaching out to my network, making it a point to contact at least five people each day over the span of a week. And I explained to them the new bounty approach and waited, you know, not expecting much immediately, but then in less than 24 hours after sharing this with one particular contact, they reached out and I was like, got a referral for you, buddy, which I was in turn shocked. I was like, holy crap, that was pretty dang quick. Now to give you a little bit of context here, I had reached out to five individual people every day for a week. This was, I think, probably Thursday when I reached out to this particular person. And by Friday, they reached out and responded with this referral. So it was not like I started and all of a sudden right away I got a lead, but it was within 24 hours of contacting this particular person that I got a lead. So this creative lead was solid. And within a week, 
of that initial introduction from my contact, I had closed a $12,000 project for branding, web, and web flow development. This single shift in my referral strategy, this bounty didn't just fill my project pipeline, it sparked a new way of thinking about generating new business for myself and for all of you, hence the reason why I'm sharing this. So now that you've heard this story of how the bounty method dramatically shifted my approach to generating new business, let's break down how you can implement this strategy in your own freelance business which honestly, that's what you're here for. You wanna know how you can do this yourself. So the concept is simple yet effective. Instead of offering a percentage of a project's costs, which can be vague and uninspiring, you offer a flat rate, a bounty for each successful referral that leads to a closed project. In my case, it was $500. In your case, it might be lower. It might be $100, it might be $250, or in some cases it might be $1,000, depending on the type of work that you do, and your network. But here's how you get started. First off, you want to define the bounty. Decide on the amount of, that feels right for you. Like we said, for me, it was $500. For you, it could be 100, 250, or even more, depending on the type of service that they are offering. So if you're working uh, off of doing illustration work, it definitely could be lower. If it's web work, it could be much higher. If it's product work, it could even be higher than that. It all depends on what you think will motivate your network the best. The next step is communicate clearly. Make sure your network understands the terms. Clearly explain that the bounty is paid out for closed projects, not just leads, closed projects. Transparency builds trust and sets a clear expectation on both sides. The next step is promote your bounty. Utilize your existing communication channels, whether that's social media, email, newsletters, direct conversations, or even Slack groups to let your network know about the bounty. Remind them periodically, but don't overdo it. This could be something where you share every quarter. Hey, just wanna give you a heads up that we upped the bounty from $250 to $500. Uh, any new project that, that closes, send them our way and we will pay you. The next step is track referrals. Keep a simple spreadsheet or use a CRM tool to track who referred whom. This helps you manage payouts and it'll also sees which parts of your network are more engaged. You especially wanna know who are gonna be the ones who are gonna be submitting more and more referrals your way. Uh, those are people that you definitely want to whine and time. And then the next step here, and I believe it's the last step, pay promptly. Once a referred project closes, make sure you pay out the bounty as quickly as possible. This not only reinforces the trust, but also encourages your network to keep engaging and referring. I believe I paid out my referral uh, within the same day that I received the deposit for the project because I wanted my contact to feel like, uh, feel that trust, feel that I appreciated the work that they had done for me. So by turning your network into active participants in your business's growth, not only are you expanding your reach, you're also building deeper, more beneficial relationships with your network. And remember, while the immediate goal here is to increase leads, this method also encourages a culture of mutual support and community within your network. It's about creating a win-win scenario where everyone feels valued. So as we kind of like wrap up, you know, today's discussion on the bounty method, let's turn our insights into immediate action. Here are three actionable steps you can take right now, right this second, to begin leveraging your network and boosting your client acquisition efforts. Action item number one, assess your network. First, evaluate your current network. Identify key contacts who are well-connected within your industry or who have shown support for your work in the past. These are the people most likely to provide quality referrals under the bounty method. The person that I reached out to is someone that I've known for, I want to say, eight years or so. Someone who is very, very well-versed in the industry that I uh, tend to work in and someone who knows exactly what I can do for my clients. And so they were more than happy and trusted me that if they referred me to a client, that I was going to bring them the value that they wanted. The second action item is set up your referral system. Next, you want to set up your referral system, decide on the bounty amount or amounts, depending on what you want to do, create simple terms of service, 
and prepare a tracking system to manage referrals and payouts. Make sure that everything is clear and ready to be communicated. This is something that I definitely highly recommend for anyone if they are going to uh, set this up, create an actual system, create a SOP or a standard operating process or procedure and go through and list out everything. List out from the initial uh, contact of the person to what happens when someone sends a, a referral your way or an introduction and so on and so forth. Pinpoint each and every single one of those parts of the process so that you know what to do when something happens and you have a clear understanding of how you want to interact with everybody. Action item number three, launch and communicate. Finally, officially launch your bounty program. Send out an announcement via email or social media. Personalize your communication if possible. Reach out directly to your key contacts and explain the program and express how they could benefit from participating. Now, one thing I want to stress here too in this final uh, action item is that we don't just want to start sending this out like crazy. Don't like start sending it out to every single person in your uh, network. I would be very strategic about this and I would also make sure that you don't structure it like a cold DM. Please do not do that. Make sure that anyone that you are offering this to is one either in your network or is someone who follows you on social media. So like, it's okay to post like, hey, everybody, want to give everybody a heads up. I'm offering a referral bonus of $500 for every project that closes uh, and so on and so forth. If you want to create a tweet or a LinkedIn post like that, by all means do that. That's perfectly fine. However, don't go sending uninitiated conversations to people or cold DMs. Don't hire a VA or an intern and just have them sending out these cold messages it's not the right way to doing that. I cannot stand cold outreach. I cannot stand uh, sending out these spammy cold DMs. It does not really work and it's only gonna tarnish your reputation. Instead, what you should do is make sure that you set up like what I did. When I started doing this, I set a goal of reaching out to five people every single day and sharing this with them. Now, I didn't just reach out to them and say, you know, hey, Bob, just wanted to give you a heads up, blah, 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 blah. blah. No, that's not what I did. Instead, what I did was I reached out to five people. I had conversations with them. And in the middle of the conversation, especially if they asked, you know, oh, what, are, what have you been up to? I would mention to them that I had this new bounty or this new referral uh, fee system that I'm working on. Uh, and I'm currently offering everyone in my network $500 cold hard cash for them to uh, send me referrals that close. So I would interject it into a conversation instead of just opening with that. And that what that really does is that fosters a better bond with your network and a better bond with your potential referral partners. So you want to make sure that you elevate and you make sure that you don't cause a foul taste in somebody's mouth when you reach out to them. Implementing these steps will help you kickstart your bounty method, transforming your approach to lead generation and client acquisition. So as we close out today's episode on the bounty method, I hope you found it not just informative, but also inspiring. Today, we've uncovered a simple yet powerful approach to enhancing your lead generation efforts and potentially transforming how you acquire new projects. We started by discussing the challenges of traditional client acquisition, lead generation methods, and then we moved on to how I transformed my own strategies with a flat rate bounty system that motivated my network to actively participate in my business growth. Now, one thing I, I'd like to add here is that I not only have done this, but I've also had a few freelancers I am coaching try this out. One of them actually messaged me the other day and they said they tried this and within a week they were able to close a project. And so that instantly tells me that there is something about this going from a percentage rate to a flat rate definitely helps. It definitely motivates people a lot more. So remember though, the key to successful implementing is clear communication, a well-defined system and consistency in your follow-up and payout processes. Start small if you need to, test the waters and scale as you see results. 
If you're interested in learning more about how to grow your freelance business with stories, tips, and cheat codes, like what you've heard in today's episode, be sure to sign up for my free bi-weekly newsletter at freelancer2founder.co. Sign up today and you'll receive a free gift in your welcome email. This is something that I just recently started building. I'm currently building a program dedicated towards helping freelancers build their freelance businesses and even create their own empires for generating income and getting financial freedom. I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm trying to help as many people as I can. If you enjoyed today's episode and want to learn more about the Design Break podcast, be sure to head on over to www.thedesignbreak.com. That's www.thedesignbreak.com for more information and many more great episodes, show notes, and other information. Don't forget to also follow me on Twitter at Rocky Rourke. You can also find me on LinkedIn for more insights and behind the scenes content about building a successful freelance business. Thank you for tuning in to Design Break Podcast. Remember to stay passionate, stay positive, and stay creative. Until next time, keep breaking barriers and pushing boundaries in your freelance business. Thank you guys so much. My name is Rocky Rourke, and it was a great time chatting with you. All right. Thanks, guys. Catch you later. Bye.